please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. As always, we want to thank the music we've been supplied with, and this time it was Silo the Husky, so thank you for that. And that's really what we're gonna go through tonight. How can you help yourself? How can you help your tire wear? How can you save the tire bill? And the most important about that is not only how can you do that, but isn't that gonna make you feel more confident? Aren't you gonna feel better about riding the bike knowing that your tire wear is optimized? to a large degree, so that you can focus on riding the bike, not worrying about what the tires are doing. Also, thank you to Sean, the master of the chat room, who's been great for us all season long in the shows. So give him some thumbs up in the chat room if you would. I know we've got a great audience from, I believe we have one in the UK, we have somebody in Denmark, we have somebody in Japan. We have somebody in Melbourne, Australia, so we truly have a global audience, and I personally am extremely thankful for that. So thank you to all of you for joining us with this series. To see a tire degrade within 20, 25 miles is really soul destroying because they are extremely expensive, extremely expensive. And it's really important that if you get the tire pressure right, the bulk of the problems will only manifest themselves very slowly. And that's very reassuring and comforting to know that that is the case. We're gonna go on to tires. So to start, we're actually gonna show you some photographs. There are nine of them. And we're gonna work you through some basic principles of how to read tires. When we're done with that, we're gonna to come to the bench. I've got a street tire, a track tire, and an oddity tire that we're gonna look at and evaluate, and you guys can all make your own best guesses based on what you learned on the photographs. And then finally, you all get to look at my race bike from the last weekend and the tire wear from that, and try and tell me what setting I screwed up in the last race in trying to make the bike handle better. So we'll see if you can all get that together. The show's usually an hour, but I have a sneaky feeling we might go <laughs> quite a bit longer than that tonight, but that's okay. Hopefully we'll get through it and we'll get almost everybody's questions answered. So, everybody's favorite that they really don't like other people to see, chicken strips. So, you can see from the photograph on the edge of the tire, we have a completely unused section of tire. Let's move on to number two. Many of you will recognize this as a pilot power so we can see from the tread pattern a couple things. Chris will pull that picture number three up for us momentarily. There we go. On to the next picture, which is graining. This is a Bridgestone Type 3 track tire. Let's get into some really ugly stuff. Ew. What a nightmare. That took approximately 10 laps to develop. All right, on to our next picture. Ugly still, yes indeed. So, what you're looking at here is a Pirelli Slick, our penultimate picture. We go back to our Michelin Power Race. Look how broad, from the compound joint, which is in the middle of the tire, through from the center towards the edge of the tire, just how long those lines are. So what we're gonna do now to reinforce what you saw on the photographs, is go through sets of tires and show you what's what and give you real life examples. So what we have here are some Michelin Pilot road tires, which came off a Ducati ME900, the modern Paul Smart replica. What we can see here is pretty even, and we keep going around the tire, but wait a minute, it creeps up to the middle. All right. On to the questions. How do you calibrate a tire gauge? Well, yes, tire warmers when you go to the track or you're racing are a very good thing. When you have a rebound scallop or lip on the leading edge of the tread on the center third of the tire, and it switches to the trailing edge towards the sidewalls, indicating low speed is too slow, how would you change the valving to get that move, get that line to move all the way to the edge? Question. We don't have a, the author, is sag affected if mechanical bottom out is one inch before the shock is fully compressed? 
All right, Geo 21. When you say rebound valving problem, it needs to be correct in what direction? Slower or faster? UTP 216. Do you have to clean a tire off when it looks like the first picture before you go back out on the track or, or just roll on all that rubber? To schedule a remote tuning appointment for you and your bike with Dave via text, email, Facebook, etc., contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.